Hello, I'm Audrey Tong, Taiwan's Digital Minister in charge of social innovation. Really happy to be here virtually to share with you some thoughts around digital transformation and how people public private partnerships can help countering the pandemic. Last year, in 2020, on the first day of the year, we began the health inspections for all flight passengers coming in from Wuhan to Taiwan. And as the first values about the R value, the basic reproduction rate of the new virus became trickling in, at the end of January that year, uh, a couple of epidemiologists, uh, Professor Fang Qi Tai and Chen Yixuan, gave a presentation to our cabinet office. They calculated a numeric model that showed definitely if three quarter of people wear the mask and wash their hands across all the different districts and all the different townships, then we will not need to go into a lockdown. However, if less than that number of people have access to mask, then uh, it's inevitable that we will face community spread. Because of this very clear 75% shared value, shared goal, <clears throat> we began a innovation process that began with the government technologists. In Taiwan, we have universal broadband and universal health care. So the pharmacists, most of them, more than 90%, have a very quick fiber optic connection back to the National Health Care Insurance Agency. And because of this, we immediately thought that we can ration out the mask produced this way on the pharmacies based on what the community have already trusted. The reason why we did not go with, say, mobile payments or other electronic payments to ration the mask is because we know in the more rural or remote places, not everyone has the uh, habit of using such mobile payments. And because of that, we will probably face pockets that less than three quarters of people have access to mask, and therefore we chose the way that has universal inclusion. So inclusion is the most important value in the beginning of digital transformation. Just as we are rolling out the GovTech project, people in the civil society, the social sector people, um, such as Howard Wu and Fin Zheng Kiang here, they also wrote their own maps. In the Tainan city, they have visualized all the different stores, whether some of them still have masks, whether some of them run out of masks. They use a crowdsource platform to ask people to contribute so that people do not have to queue in vain. And because in Taiwan, the civic tech community is very well connected to the cabinet office, so I immediately took their idea and asked the premier, saying that we need to support the people, trust them with open data. And when open data is updated in real time, we call it an open ABI. So on the beginning of February, they got the access to all the 6,000 pharmacies, and every 30 seconds, it's updated on their map, which pharmacies still have some masks available and which have just run out of masks and down to the individual pieces of masks sold. But at the same time, the pharmacists are also doing their own social innovation. Many pharmacists handed out those numbered cards saying instead of swiping the IC card for national health care uh, during the queue, they would ask people who queue in the morning to just uh, deposit the IC card in the pharmacy in exchange of a small number. And then with that numbered card, they can go back in the evening when the queue um, is no longer there and they can redeem the mask ration as well as their uh, IC card. Now, individually, this social innovation by the pharmacists could reduce queuing very effectively. Individually, the mask map can avoid needless queuing to the pharmacies that have run out of mask. But these two together, well, uh, created a lot of explosive uh, externalities, uh, much like Mentos and Coca-Cola, uh, so much so that a nearby pharmacy near my residence put a very large banner in the front window saying, don't trust the app, exclamation mark. And why is that? 
because if a pharmacy hand out the numbers, then on the mask map, it's as if they have not sold anything because it only counts the uh, national IC card swipes. And so during the lunch break, they would sell everything uh, on the map, it looks like, and people would call and complain that um, why are they you know, not selling all the masks in the morning? Why do they um, tell the people who show up uh, with the mask map at hunt that they have run out of mask when they show so clearly that on the map app that they have still some mask left. And so to resolve this uh, situation, we cannot take one side over the other. We cannot tell the pharmacists to stop handing those number cards. We can't tell the mask map makers to stop updating every 30 seconds. Instead, we ask the pharmacists what to do. And after a couple weeks of co-creation, we eventually settled on a button. If they click the button, they can disappear from the map for the day. And so it's like a cloaking device. And so the moral of this uh, co-development is that mutual trust relies on taking all the sides instead of choosing one side over the other. We need to engage in multi-stakeholder conversations. Actually, we had such a conversation back in 2017 with the tax filing experience. Uh, George Zhiyun, a service designer, uh, petitioned at a time saying um, the tax filing experience is explosively hostile to the citizens. And it was indeed the case. But instead of defending our policy, we simply said, OK, it's everyone's business with everyone's help. Anyone who complain about tax filing get to co-create the 2018, the next year's tax filing system together and that's exactly what we did and when we did so we did a api first procurement meaning that the system became like lego blocks so when it comes for example for people who don't have time to go to the pharmacy to queue and they want to instead pre-order on an app in March, it took us only a couple of days to change the tax filing platform so it became a mask pre-ordering platform. So across different ministries, they can nevertheless share the same infrastructure for cybersecurity reasons and also for privacy reasons. All these are already very well understood, familiar tax filing experience for people so people don't have to learn another new way of interaction during the pandemic. Again, this made people feel safe and also made develop much easier. So API first procurement is also very important. Also, the civil society sometimes speaks through interpolations of members of the parliament. This is MP Gao Hongan. Uh, she was VP of data analytics at Foxconn before joining the, the parliament. So she knows something about data. Uh, and back in March, she interpolated Minister Chen Shizhong of Health and Welfare, saying that according to the OpenStreetMap community, even though it looks like that the population centers align almost perfectly with the mass distribution, it's actually a data bias. And why is it bias? Because not everyone owns a helicopter. So what looks close on the map may not actually be close for the more rural places of people who have to rely on public transportation and so on. So she suggested that we need to correct this Taipei city-based bias. And Minister Chen, instead of defending the policy, again said, oh, legislator, teach us. And so we work with the OpenStreetMap community and the very next day, we change the distribution method and introduce the pre-ordering. So again, this is co-creation across all the different sectors in the society, including entrepreneurs. Uh, you're looking at Yolvent, a vending machine um, expert company. Uh, and what they did is that they convert the pharmacies, which in, indeed uh, relied on this manual processing of IC cards to be self-service vending machines. And after they roll it out in the Taipei city, uh, the National Health Insurance Agency uh, figured out how to work with such virtual pharmacies, how to extend their API so that they can handle this kind of authentication. And once they um, published that API, we made sure that all the four convenience stores, again, in the economic sector, more than 12,000 um, different stores, all adopted their kiosks so that they can talk through the same API that the vending machine, uh, the Yolvent team talked upon. And suddenly in April, we began pre-ordering at all the different convenience stores. And that's more than tripled our distribution mechanisms. And that's the point when we uh, got the 75% of people having access to masks and wearing them. 
When designing for the convenience store uh, experience, initially we thought we could authenticate using the automated teller machines, the ATM available in pretty much all the convenience stores in Taiwan. However, when we did a focus group, uh, I talked to, for example, this is Grandma Yang, uh, a young friend uh, of my own grandmother. Uh, my grandma is 88 years old and Grandma Yang is 70, 70 uh, year old. And this um, KOL, key opinion leader of the local community, really doesn't like going into a pharmacy to queue for a, a long time. And she used to complain a lot uh, about the uh, queuing experience. And so it looks like a, a perfect chance to introduce her to the ATM-based authentication and prepayment system. But she told me uh, in no uncertain terms that if we use the ATM, then she will actually uh, be very afraid because she'll be afraid Afraid that a password will be um, copied uh, by the people queuing after her, um, that she'll be afraid that after a misclick of an ATM button, maybe she'll accidentally transfer her saving to the uh, center of disease control accounts uh, or many other failure modes. And so she said, unless you can uh, use exactly the same flow of experience as the pharmacies, she will not consider convenience store, even though it's much closer uh, to her community. So we redesigned the entire flow so that she can actually count the coins and pay through the coins uh, on the um, convenience store uh, with the staff there uh, and use their national health card without requiring any use of an ATM card or mobile payments. And, and she was very happy and she helped convince uh, younger friends like 66 years old, 55 years old. And that is how we get uh, the fully inclusive design process. So again, in, include the senior people, include people who don't uh, think about a digital experience the same way as you do, as early as possible as focus groups. That will make sure that digital transformation uh, feels safe to everyone involved instead of uh, just a few people in a society. So finally, uh, I would like to say that all this experience, we've documented it. You can check it out at TaiwanCanHelp.us and Minister Chen Shizhong, uh, as pictured here, um, around the time last April when we hit 75% of monthly availability um, response to someone on Twitter uh, asking if it's possible to dedicate some mask that we did not collect because many people already buy masks uh, from other commercial vendors. So dedicate the mask uh, rationing quota to international humanitarian aid. And we implemented that to uh, last year. And to date, there's more than 7 million uh, pieces of mask dedicated this way. And we subsequently dedicated also the blueprint to make such a uh, self uh, contained mask factory and so on. And I think this symbolizes the idea of Taiwan can help. So thank you for listening and live long and prosper.